right, check this out. So, got a new RAID setup. Currently, there are two one terabyte 970 Pros, and then we've got eight 970 Pros in two four by four cards, four by NVMe drives. So 970s times four times two. So there's eight 970 Pros in these ASUS breakout cards. And then we've got one, two, three, four more 970 Pros in individual ASUS breakout cards, all in a software RAID. This stuff is nuts. So, let me give you a quick tour. We got the cards, the A cards, or the eight, and then the other single, we got the dual prox. So this board, this board is the Supermicro uh, X11 DPH. Um, we're running 24 core, uh, two 24 core, 48 threads. Um, yeah, 96 total threads on this board. It's insane. This board also has three UPI channels between the CPUs. Each of those is capable of up to 20.8 gigabytes a second, um, theoretically. So the current test that I ran was using 24 threads, uh, 32 gigabytes of file size, and it was a sequential. So this is the results that I got. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's 22 gigabytes a second read, which is lower than I had hoped from theoretical, and 33 gigabytes, almost 34 gigabytes read. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank up the threads real quick here. Let's do that. We're gonna go turn the threads up to 48. So this will surely use threads on both CPUs. And we'll go ahead and try to run this again. Now the reason I'm doing the sequential as opposed to doing the uh, as opposed to doing you know some of the others is uh, the only way that you're actually going to fully saturate the bandwidth you know that this is set up as capable is by using tons of threads um, and you know tons of file size. I mean, it's just going to be too fast for any smaller data loads. So let's see what happens here. As you can see, the boards are all processing. Everything is going nuts here. All the stuff, all the blinkies are blinking. We'll have to see what happens here. So far, it's looking problematic on the read. Looks like we made it worse by having more threads. So we clearly hit a point of no return on the threads. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely dropped the performance significantly from the last test, which is not what I would expect. Hmm. All right, let's see, this one's almost finished. Oh, also this board is set up with 96 gigs of RAM in six channels, uh, DDR4, of course. Um, yeah. All right, looks like it finished. It's not exactly ideal. Less than last time, 15 gigabytes and 26, respectively. So tweak a couple more settings here and see what we can come up with. Uh, let's see, we'll go back to 24. And then, let's try a slightly smaller size on the file and see what happens. So here's the current setup, 16 gigabytes, and I switched it back to 24 threads. Uh, over here you can see the CPU workload. And our initial return is 
18 ish. 1819. Hmm. Let's see what happens here. Theoretically, with this setup, with the max speed of each of these drives and the theoretical throughput on the PCIe buses, you would expect on the order of, I don't know, maybe 35, 40 gigabytes a second, but real world is always different than what you would expect, plus benchmarking tools we're not necessarily set up for this array. In addition, I don't know about Windows and how effective its software rate is. But as you can see from the complete test here, getting a write of 34 gigabytes a second. Okay, so for this test, um, I'm using uh, Atto ben Disk Benchmark. Um, it comes back st uh, significantly less than when I'm using Crystal Disk, and I believe the reason for that is that it's not actually pushing the load as hard as it should, uh, because if you look at how many threads this application uses, it's minimal compared to um, what you're able to set with Crystal Disk. So I think that's one of the advantage of benchmarking with Crystal Disk is you can actually push loads uh, across multiple CPUs, and where we're using two CPUs, here that have you know a significant number of um, uh, available cores to them, you know it's important to make sure that you utilize those, especially if you're trying to do you know full bus saturation tests. Uh, you know you've got to you've got to test all of the things that are available to you. So right now the test is currently in progress. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So what we've got is um, I'm doing a range of I.O. sizes, so from uh, 4K, uh, 4K size to 64 megs, which is the largest it allows you to do. Uh, I've got a Q depth of 256, um, which is the largest it allows you to do. And you can see the results there. The results uh, up to this point are not completely stellar. Um, and I think the biggest reason for that is the uh, this software just isn't taking advantage of the configuration. So in order to show you that, and show you what I think about this, I'm going to actually, after this test, run four other tests using this software at the same time, so we'll be able to then determine uh, and show you what more real-world throughput looks like if they were able to um, add more functionality of the software. Was to dig deeper um, and add more threads and add more workload. Uh, this software just isn't generating the workload that you would expect. Uh, we can also see that from the performance indicator. Um, it's barely using 2% of the CPU, and uh, you know we're pushing gigabytes and gigabytes of data. So I have seen people get 10 gigabytes a second, 12 gigabytes a second with this benchmark tool, um, but I do think that those were on systems that had higher base clock uh, CPUs. These are only 1.8 gigahertz, um, and so, and then they do clock up, but I just don't think the individual core is as effective as those systems, so that's why it's not saturating the bus as quickly as uh, some of those other benchmarks I've seen. So this is completed now. So as you can see, pretty strong numbers there. Pretty strong numbers. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna get this set up for the four and then I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so got the software uh, preloaded. I'm about to push the start button. Um, just wanted to run over some of the caveats real quick, if you end up running it this way, uh, you have to put each test file in its own folder. Um, and so that's just by clicking on the three dots and then specifying a folder. So each test file uh, requires its own folder or else it gets all messed up. So we're gonna go ahead and try to execute this. 
let's see what happens here. And away it goes. It's interesting how this first instance seems to be lagging behind. I also chose to go with five instead of four, so I wanted to make sure I completely saturated this thing as much as possible. And clearly the very first drive, or the very first instance here is getting uh, starved a little bit, as you can see from the extremely terrible um, benchmarks on the first but the other ones are looking pretty good. So doing some quick math, that's eight, that's 14, 15, 16. So we're not seeing a huge improvement with um, this setup yet. Maybe once we get to the larger file size, something magical might pop out here see what happens. Looks like this one is completely starved and blocked. It's barely even getting any right happening. And we'll have to probably just throw out the results of the first one here because as throughput becomes available, it's now picking up speed. And we'll have to throw out the last few of the, the final one. But as you can see from the second, if we take the three middle, we have a 14, a 5, and a 5, and a yeah, that's pretty significant. And then 11 and 5 and 3. Interesting. <clears throat> I think I'm going to repeat this test with uh, only 4 this time to try to avoid some of these deadlocks to get more of a clean solution. So, these are the results of the trying for 4. We've got three, nine, five. So like 20 gigabytes a second. It just isn't hitting as high as I would expect. Looks like actually uh, some of the peak performance was around uh, the eight megabyte file IO size. Not file, IO size rather. Um, that got to almost 22 on read and on write that got 16 like 20 so uh, it's just not seeing the same performance on this software okay